Hi, this is Doug Joseph with Design 8 Studio with a quick update about the CNC plasma table that I'm working on. And specifically, this is about the 3D printed torch mount. So I bought a machine torch, which is to say a straight or pencil torch. And I'm working to design a 3D printed way to mount the torch on the Lowrider 3 platform that I'm using for printing. So here you can see that my basic approach to getting floating Z was to take a 200 millimeter linear rod that came with two sliding bearings. I'll put a link to the Amazon listing of this in the description, cutting it in half and using 100 millimeters of it for the floating Z um, uh, to, to be able to have room to move. A couple of things about that. One is even though this particular name brand of uh, linear rod and sliding bearings was quite affordable, I've been very pleased with the quality and the steel of the linear rod is very hard. These rods, I went to cut this in half. I started using my um, bandsaw with a metal cutting blade on it and it was basically just laughing at that blade. And thankfully, I was able to use my Evolution uh, multi-material cutting saw, which is mounted onto a wall-mounted sliding um, panel saw type rig, which I've mentioned and showed in, showed in another video on my channel and was able to get it cut. Very pleased with uh, the quality of the steel and the quality of the slide bearings uh, even though they were quite affordable. So the next thing to mention is that while I've got this one mounted with two M3 uh, by eight millimeter screws, the, the next order of business was to be able to get the top and bottom screws mounted in such a way as that they would protrude and provide stop block to limit the range of motion of the slide bearing. And the solution that I came up with was instead of an eight millimeter screw going with an M3 by 16 and using these uh, knurled uh, inserts that are commonly used for heat inserts and using an M3 by four by five, using it kind of like a modified washer uh, on the 16 millimeter screw. And so that will allow the screw to tighten up long before the head gets down into the uh, countersunk hole on the linear rod. And uh, I'm trusting that that will work. I mentioned one other thing about this part. Uh, these holes are made to go into the, the top two sets of holes are made to go into the holes on the Lowrider 3 core that would normally hold the rings that hold your router in place. And the bottom two holes are made to align with the screw holes on the core that would normally hold your, your dust extraction ring set on. The other thing is that the wing protruding on this side is for mounting an end stop switch. And that is so that the floating Z uh, knows uh, when to trigger. And on the back, you can see I've placed some grooves that will help me with bringing the wiring from the end stop around and back and in to where it needs to go. I've also designed several of these parts with um, zip tie grooves so that as the wiring is coming through, I can attach a zip tie to pin it down. I also put zip tie grooves on the, the front part of the mount on both sides. Um, and there are zip tie mounts on this protrusion, which is for holding uh, a pin, like a, like a felt tip or Sharpie pin, attaching it to the plasma cutter so that I can run it without the plasma cutter working to have a pin mark fold points or other details on the metal. This uh, pin attachment is basically a remix of earlier pan attachment remixes for Lowrider 2 and Lowrider 3 
just simply amalgamated in with this front clamp. Uh, finally, the last thing I'll mention in this video is that my plan is for a magnetic breakaway type attachment. So as you can see, this area is made, this countersunk area is made to kind of reduce my thickness overall. And it's made to mount onto the slide bearing here. And then the next question is how to handle the magnetic breakaway. And currently you can see, uh, actually I have one of the magnets that's not been put in place yet. And these magnets have not yet been glued in. But this configuration does really well with automatically aligning into the right position. However, I, I'm very concerned that with just these 12, six on either side, of little slender tab style neodymium magnets, that I simply don't have enough pull power. I don't think there's enough attraction here to hold, to properly secure the, the weight of the torch itself. And there's kind of a sweet spot for finding the right amount of magnetic attraction because you want it to hold the torch fairly well, but if the torch should hit something, rather than damaging the tip of the torch, you prefer the magnetic breakaway to go ahead and give. And this one, I think the magnetic pull is too weak. Now I'll mention that there are some very, very strong magnets that can be salvaged out of old PC hard disk drives. And I just happened to have an old PC that probably really should have been thrown away a long time ago. And I was able to salvage the hard drive out of it. And then in destroying the hard drive, I was able to salvage those really strong magnets. Those magnets go to the opposite extreme. They're actually too strong. And so I need to do some experimenting with how thick a layer of 3D printed plastic between the, the thick magnet and a piece of sheet metal on the other side would be the right amount of distance separation to reduce its pull to just the right sweet spot for the amount of attraction. Here are those magnets that I salvaged from an old PC's hard disk drive. They're very thick and very powerful. And I'll just show you, you want to be careful not to let this pinch your finger, but I'll just show you how powerful they are. Um, that'll really hurt you if, you if it pinches your finger. Um, these pieces of metal that the magnets are attached to, it came from the hard drive this way. There were some tabs, uh, some uh, attachment tabs or, or control tabs that were sticking off of these pieces of metal that I had to cut off using my quarter band. And uh, I may, there's a way to get these thick pieces of metal off of these magnets, but I may just leave them on there because they give me screw holes for attaching the magnets where I want to. So I'll probably just deal with the fact that that adds some extra thickness. Um, I think 3.7 millimeters, 3.75 millimeters of extra thickness for these metal uh, pieces would, would add into the equation for how thick my um, torch mount is. And I may just deal with that because I like the fact that it gives me a really solid way to mount these and, and secure them in place. But I wanted to go ahead and show these very powerful magnets that I salvaged from the PC hard drive. Uh, but assuming that the magnet issue was taken care of, the way that this all would go together is that uh, this would mount onto the, the slide bearing in, in this fashion. And then this part would attach magnetically on here. And then finally, the torch would go in here and be clamped in place. And uh, there, there is an option of doing heat inserts here so that the screws have something to bite in. However, this design simply uses nylock nuts inserted into capture slots on the back. Uh, I may have to switch to the heat inserts method. If I switch to a design that has sockets here for those large thick magnets that I got out of the hard disk drive. Uh, the last thing that I'd mention is that this particular design with the 
uh, capture slots for the nylock nuts uh, accomplishes a good clean print by having a single layer thin sacrifice layer where the hole transitions from the capture slot down to the screw hole. So you can't really see it on the camera, but down inside these holes, there's a tiny layer of plastic that needs to be melted out with a soldering iron to clear it out in order for the screw to pass through. And that's a trick for designing your uh, 3D printed parts when you need to print it down on the bed here and you need to transition from a capture slot down to a smaller hole and you want a good clean transition, that one layer thick sacrifice layer trick is a good handy trick to know. The issue with this one where the magnet is not yet inserted is that I had a bit of elephant's foot on this print and I was using an X-Acto knife to clean it up and I cleaned this one up just a little too much. The magnet doesn't uh, pos position itself real well in the hole. So it would depend on the glue if I was gonna glue these in. But I think based on the fact that these are too weak for what I'm doing, I'm going to pry them back out and use them on some other project. And I'm simply not going to use these parts at all, but rather use some new 3D printed part or modified for those thicker magnets. So I'll bring another update soon on my CNC plasma table that is based on the Lowrider 3 platform. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, I wish you happy making.